I'm still under the impression of the speech contest, so I'll announce just like at the speech contest. <laughs> Irina Dmitrieva with the speech entitled Thinking About Risks. Thinking About Risks. Irina Dmitrieva. <laughs> Step 
number three, risk mitigation. You will work with this <coughs> risk. So a group of people should think about activity. What should you um, do? Just minimize all risk which will be critical for your inter <coughs> uh, for your company. And the fourth step it is review and monitoring. And then it is process. The man who knew everything about prison. I've been around 20 years or so, and I keep learning new things. So, what I'm going to do is show you some of the stuff I've learned. So, the first thing you can get me on, Andre, this is not organized. The speech is rather disorganized. And let's see how we do here. Is, oh, there we go. Getting fancy with PowerPoint. So, one of the things I've done here, by the way, I should say, I put the speech over here so I'm standing in the light because this 16 by 9 format is kind of broad for PowerPoint anyhow. So, this way I have the spotlight on me as well as on my presentation. The purpose of my presentation is to show you what's available, some of the things that I've learned. I'm not how to, but this is a special day. I invite you to interrupt me because we have a small audience. If you have questions, please ask me as we go. I encourage you to try, and some of you are computer types, you will want to try things yourself. When you see it, you want to do it. Otherwise, please ask me because I'm more than happy to help. I'm a computer teacher. The packages that I'm going to name are Microsoft, Dragon, Corel, Mobavi, and Audacity. Isn't that a boring slide? It was. Got too much text all at once. Let's try it again. I'm talking about Microsoft. My focus is Microsoft PowerPoint which is well integrated with Microsoft Excel in ways that you may not realize, I'm going to show you, and Microsoft Word. More about this in my second presentation, which will come next time we have a hole in the agenda, and I'll jump in and fill it. I use Office 2010, which works as well as any. I've used Office 2003, 2007, 2010, and 2013. The difference is confusion. Bill Gates Mixes it up every three years just to confuse you, but the function doesn't change much. <laughs> I use Corel, first the PhotoPaint, which is the bitmap graphics, 
and second, Corel Draw. Now you notice, I hope, that I have managed to, by making these things fly in, I keep you focused on exactly what I'm talking about right now. And that's pretty easy to do. We'll get to that. Alternatives would be Microsoft PowerPoint, or Microsoft Paint, which is free. We love that price. And Adobe Creative Suite, which is more expensive and a bit more powerful than Corel. Other packages cost money. By the way, in my next presentation, I'll tell you how you do this. This is what Microsoft Word is good for. <coughs> Movavi, the video editor, I use. This video, by the way, is available on PowerPoint on YouTube, which you got you got the link in the agenda. So you can see this on YouTube if you want to see it again. Audacity audio package, actually free and worth money. And Dragon Naturally Speaking, I dictate every presentation I do, I dictate because it's much faster than writing. So here are my PowerPoint topics. First, dealing with text. Just plain old text boxes and then word art. And then shapes, graphics, transparency. I should have said graphics there, I didn't. And then formatting, which includes the background and the format. I had to, for instance, format this so I can stand here in the limelight while my presentation is here. That required reformatting it. And movies. And I do a lot with, lately, making movies with PowerPoint, which I find to be pretty effective. So in my movie, if you want to watch it, what you'll see is this stuff here in my talking head, right here where I'm standing. You see me performing in the, uh, in the YouTube. But any motion is pretty easy. You put some text together. Now let me give you a compliment on the PowerPoint that I see here. People in this club do an extraordinarily good job with PowerPoint in the following ways. First of all, you're concise. Most people stick to the rule of using only about three lines. You don't make it too crowded. The other thing I love that people in this club do, you have the best taste in graphics. We are truly art talkers. You get the most creative pictures off the internet that I can imagine. I, I envy your ability to find good stuff. I love the PowerPoint presentations here by and large, but what I'm showing you is stuff that most of you don't use. So after you create your three line text, then select the animation tool, which looks like this. It's right in the middle of the menu. And you have things fly in or appear and disappear. Flying in and appearing and disappearing are pretty simple. You can have stuff jump around, but you probably don't want to do that too much. This is something I did for little kids. The wheels on the bus go round, 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 round. So the kids get into this they have it with, with all the flashing lights and so on. But in a business presentation, in a serious presentation, you want to be real careful with the razzmatazz. Otherwise, people will be paying attention to this instead of you. And you are the center of attraction. We're going to talk about transparencies, two types. First of all, you can bring in GIF pictures. Now, there are two major formats, GIF and JPG. JPG is what your digital camera takes. GIF, graphics interface format, will do a transparency. For instance, this is a JPG. It has a white background, which looks kind of ugly here. You don't want that white background. If you use a GIF, you get the same thing with no background, which is what you want. How can you tell when you're cruising the internet to get those wonderful pictures that you all come up with? If it has a checkerboard background, that means it's transparent. You won't see it when it comes up. So just keep the checkerboards in mind when you're looking for graphics on the internet. This is a PowerPoint transparency. It doesn't mean transparent, it means translucent, semi-transparent. You can see through it and you can select what percentage transparent it is. This is about 40% transparent. We'll see that again right here. 
talking about page set. Oh, watch this. This is a Toastmasters picnic that Andre and Victor will remember, perhaps. This is Pura Gova, 2008. And what I did was I had a succession of transparencies, each disappear like the veils off of a bride, uh, as this show showed up. So I did. I added a little razzmatazz. I hope not too much. My point on this is that this is four by three format, four across by three down, which is the traditional PowerPoint format. But it's not what we usually want because what I'm speaking on this is 16 by 9 instead of 4 by 3. So 4 by 3 is the default, at least in 2010. And what you want to do is usually switch to 16 9, so you have to do that. So you do that through the menu design page setup. And if you don't do it, what you'll have is black borders here and here. That looks a little bit ugly if you're presenting here at Craft and Common. So just remember you have to do a little page setup. This is what a picture looks like at 16.9. You see you lose a little bit off the, off the top and the bottom. Still same smiling faces. That's me as you can. Okay, now setting up the presentation, you go to the menu, view, slide, master on the menu, and it lets you set up the format for how the slide will be, how the slides will be presented. You notice that the default font is Arial, I've changed it here, this, this is a screenshot, and this is the real thing. So I changed it to Times New Room. You can change the font, change the color, the size, whatever you want. You can change the size and position of the text, which is exactly what I've done in this presentation. As I mentioned, I shrunk the box in. It used to be out here. I shrunk it over there. So I have a place to stand here. Change the text alignment, which is defaults to center and left, and you may want to make it all, all left. And lastly, you can position the header, the footer, and the page number. Now this is something to know. PowerPoint does this in a confusing way. Where they go on the screen, your date, the footer, slide number, and a header too if you have one, is dictated here in the slide master, but the content is done via the insert function on the main menu. So you have to go two places, two places to get the slide number. Slide numbering is something that you usually want to do. So people can tell you, would you please go back to slide 10 gram? I didn't understand that. You, you, you can go back to 10. So you want the number to appear there. Talking about slide backgrounds, this is hard to read. If you make your background too colorful, it's going to get in the way. So what do you do about it? One thing you can do is to make your background semi-transparent, the same way I made that oval transparent, so that stuff stands out against it. Feed it, feed it. Now this text is readable. You do this, by the way, you do want to set up your background. You notice that the background in this is a Ukrainian flag motif that, you, that, that, that I set up uh, a while ago. But in this slide, obviously, I'm talking about background, I've changed the background. So it's format background, design background styles, format background. You can also use word art, and this word art can get a little bit fancy, a little bit overdone, but this is one place where it's good because you get an outline. So if you have the outline is both dark and light, that means you can see it against almost any background, which is an advantage of word art. I use Excel for graphics. This is something I was playing around with a few years ago, make a spiral. 
So I programmed, put in the formula for making a spiral, mathematical formula, graphed it in Excel. This is, this is what I got. When you import it into um, PowerPoint, PowerPoint, if you do a paste special, this is the key, copy from Excel and do a paste special, Excel, or PowerPoint, will know what all the parts of the graph are. It knows this is a background, it knows that these are lines, so you can address the individual parts of the graph. You'll see more of this. I imported this into Corel Draw, gave it a transparent background, spiffed it up, rounded the corner, so I made a spiral. If I wanted, if I wanted to do a snail, I could do that. Here's another example of the same thing. This is the bell curve, the intelligence distribution. I took this right from Excel, pasted it into PowerPoint, and I'm able to change the color of the background, make this uh, gradient, grade from uh, blue to white, change the font size, do a lot of stuff with stuff that I copy from Excel. I can also copy this into a drawing, uh, vector drawing package such as Corel Draw. Ooh, isn't that nice? And I make a point. Now, this isn't exactly true what I'm going to tell you. We like to think it is. But if Toastmasters made, it made everybody 15 IQ points smarter, believe me, we'd have a bigger crowd than, than we have today. <laughs> Putting things on the screen is something that you want to do, particularly as you get co more complex. Everything on the screen has a, has a size and has a position that you can see by simply uh, right-clicking on the object. As, for instance, this heading, I could do a, put this here, I could right-click on it, I'd see where that header is on the screen. And I could move it just by not by <coughs> dragging it, but by saying exactly where it goes. As I'm putting together a complex screen, I bring things in where they belong, I write down where they belong, and then I move them around, move them out of the way so I can see the animation sequence. The animation sequence is important. That's the sequence in which they come in. Also, what goes on top of what? That's the order. And you can change. There's a menu, menu selection, move to back, move backwards, move to back, move to front. So what's on top of what? For instance, in that slide that I showed you, the Toastmasters picnic with the veils disappearing and the screen emerging, that's about 10 images all in the same place replacing each other. In order to get the sequencing right, I scattered them, scattered them around, got the thing working, and then I used the position to put them back together. So I used size and position to put them back together. Uh, this is a slide that I did on human evolution. Uh, it's a kind of a busy slide. It's a, talking about how people got to be where we are when we go from speech up to, uh, oh, well, go, go from direct walking up to speech. And then I'm talking about what happened to our noggins over this time. We got considerably bigger heads. I did that, by the way, making those things appear by sliding a white rectangle. You couldn't see it, but if I slide the white rectangle down, it reveals the other stuff. And then I overlay that with something else. This slide was a little bit complex to put together. I used the techniques I just showed you in order to do that. Now to talk about recording a PowerPoint presentation. Something you want to do for a couple of reasons. One, practice timing. You should uh, pay attention to the timer. By the, uh, by the way, Victoria, uh, this, this is taking more than seven minutes. And it, it, I, I should have mentioned that. Three bold seven minutes. I can't, I can't see you back there. It's probably just as well. <laughs> You're on the other side of the light. Uh, to record a PowerPoint uh, pr presentation, you do slideshow record on, on, on the menu. And you want to record.
record it in order to practice your timing, to get the timing down right, to share the PowerPoint, let's say you're going to a convention and you want to run the thing over and over and over in a loop, you can do that by recording it and then just having it repeat. You can also make a movie. Get to movies in a minute. Now this is a movie of our esteemed member, Michael Bedwell, <laughs> and his Eula boat. And he, what, he's demonstrate, what he's demonstrating here is this special paddle that he invented. <laughs> I, have turned, I have turned the sound off, and this is a problem that you have if you do a movie with PowerPoint, that you may want the sound, and you have to rig external speakers. The computer's not going to do it for you. So you can add video, but you can also turn your presentation into a video. And this is well hidden, so take a note where it is. File, save, and send, create a video. You'd never expect to find it there. And you can create a video. It creates a WMV video that you can use, such as I used, to put this on YouTube. So the first thing you do is record this, the slideshow with the narration. So it's all good to go. Everything's in there. And then you record. Tell it to make a movie. It takes a long time, half an hour or so. And then I use video editing software, this Movavi that I'll talk about next time, in order to clean it up. So, <laughs> that's all, folks. See, I, I, I crowd myself out here. But as I said, I do have another presentation with more stuff talking about the other packages, talking about Word, Excel, and the graphics packages in a little bit more detail. So, Mr. Toastmaster. Who will go? Nobody, okay. <laughs> then I will choose somebody if nobody wants to go. I will choose you, please. <laughs> Try to guess what this means. 
Hello everyone. I suppose I know correct meaning abracadabra because I know what is abracadabra. It's a mystic uh, statement. Uh, just a thousand years ago, people uh, meditating or uh, went to the unchangeable condition uh, using using this meaning. Uh, if you write down abracadabra, uh, you can read uh, this uh, word uh, from the end to the beginning. Uh, I suppose abracadabra is something un understandable, some, some, maybe some kind of uh, mystic uh, meaning. <laughs> the, I, 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 I suppose uh, abracadabra uh, conclusion or abracadabra point of view, just, uh, I, I think it's something not uh, understandable for everyone. What you think? Micro trottoir. <laughs> Any volunteers? No. Okay. Micro trottoir. Well, I know what trottoir is. Trottoir is, uh, as far as I know, just uh, walking side of the street for people. But micro trottoir. Uh, let's try to guess what it is. You know, recently I started watching movies about stars, YouTube movies, and uh, did you know that there is a great, immense star, and there are several, several such stars, there are many of them, but one star is 1,700 times bigger than our sun. Imagine the big uh, watching, like, how do you call it, the wheel at Padil, yeah, the watching wheel at Padil. Ferris wheel. Huh? Ferris wheel. Ferris wheel. First? Ferris wheel. First, yes. Yeah, Ferris wheel at Padil. If our Earth is uh, like a nut, like this, that star is like that wheel. So our, our Earth is tiny. And uh, imagine that if you want to find people from other galaxies, maybe they're not like lizards, but similar to people, or just the same size. They could be very tiny. Very tiny people, or maybe they're giants, they're 1,000 or 1 million times bigger than you. There, there can be such creatures in other universes. So let's imagine these creatures, not big but small, 1,000 times or 1 million even times smaller than people, they live on our Earth. And they're watching us, they're spying on us, they're in this room too. Imagine, they are watching our meeting, they're applauding. And for them, our government, Mr. Klitschko, decided to create a micro trottoir <laughs> for these creatures, for them not to be that hostile and for them to be friendly. We create conditions like for disabled people, special uh, things and appliances, and the same for aliens who are very, very small. Micro trottoir is a walking, how do you call this, the pavement. Payment for very small people. Exactly like this. Any volunteers? No? Okay, then let me call someone out. Hmm. You please? <laughs> Understand so, but we are not in Canada, so that's why everything is possible. What do you say about Juju? First of all, in uh, Ukrainian and Russian speaking audience, who are thinking about little dog because Juju, this is like a very little dog, a home pet. And this is a perfect name for Juju. Maybe this is very sweet words for ladies. 
to say the beautiful lady, you are my juju. I adore. <laughs> so, 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 the sweet card, my sweet card, you are juju. I know. So, I'm not sure because I'm not French, so I'm Ukrainian. But so, so far, so good. And of course, the uh, second opinion, maybe this is something like a sweet cake, uh, maybe a sweet. Yogurt, yogurt juju, yes, uh, please uh, wait, uh, give me a little bit of sweet juju. Because French, we do enjoy cooking. That's why if you are coming come to a restaurant or crack a cup, you can order juju and somebody can understand you. So this is my suggestion, by the way. And this something else, I don't know.
you know, knowing where to pick the things, you know, where they hide stuff, uh, and uh, that's 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 a pretty serious challenge. Graham today, I think, succeeded in actually helping me understand many things which I kind of intuitively knew, but I didn't know where to find them. And thank you ever so much. Number one, never thought of having this spotlight place on, on the screen. I, and to me, it's a true innovation because the, all this, the usual challenge with PowerPoint is either you have the whole thing projected on your forehead or you're hiding someplace in the shadows. So the way you present it and when, the way you conducted the whole presentation for me was the eye opener. Great thing, great takeaway. Thank you very much. Number two, uh, it's movies. Well, this gentleman, who is the best part of me, Nazari, uh, he is the pro in shooting these YouTube videos and, and you know, and, and you know, gathering likes and, and things. But he and me, and he would confirm, usually would do the thing uh, the conventional way. So you have something done, narration, you have presentation, but then you have the screen capture, this OCR, I guess it's called software, which actually captures it from the screen. Takes time, quality could be dicey, and, and it's kind of a bit awkward way of doing it. I have never, you know, thought of PowerPoint already having the built-in option in there. So thanks a lot. Great takeaway for me. Again, to my taste, the presentation was great. Why? Because Graham is, seasoned, is a seasoned speaker, and honestly, you know, this is a likability factor. And that's very important. Uh, whenever somebody comes to the stage, uh, you know, they, they say there is the kind of uh, 8 20 rule. Uh, within the first 8 seconds, in general, we kind of figure out who the person is and we decide whether we like this person or not, just from pure appearances. So, clothes matter. <laughs> you know, whatever you have on you, how you look, it's, it's a big deal. 20 seconds is when the person starts talking. And after first couple of sentences, then you kind of think to yourself, uh, without even registering this, uh, like, oh, well, it's rubbish, I don't like this. Or I wouldn't, I would just switch off. So in, in, a, in, a, in, in Graham's uh, situation, uh, you know, I, I want to hear more. It's interesting, you're a good storyteller. The only thing I would improve is, well, if I do this presentation next time or something like that, I would start from the slide number, I think, 10 where you said, listen guys, what I admire in, in, in this club when you do the PowerPoint presentation, that you start with uh, the good graphics, you, you try to really have three lines on the slide. So, in fact, what happened that uh, you asked, you engaged me with this slide very much, because I immediately thought, oh man, when was the last time I did this presentation? So if you started with this slide, you would get me on board right off. And then you would, you know, download all this, uh, you know, geeky technical stuff, which is very interesting, but may not be you know, that interested, interesting to everybody as it is to me. So that's uh, pretty much it. So number one, great presentation, very likable presenter, more emotion and more engagement from slide one, and I guess uh, it would, you know, it would do your next presentation even better than this. Was it stacked?